Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, rabbits stalking with rimfires, crows dusting off his tutu. Sorry, his tutu. We have the regulars, new stump, hunting YouTube, and a plug for what we're doing in Airheads and Fishing Britain. So what's this then? Is this a Mark Gilchrist test gun, is it? First, field sports fitness. Does heart rate affect your hit rate? Do you need to be fit to hunt? Well, it depends on what you're up to. Let's use sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam as our volunteer. Here he is in a German forest in a high seat. It's cold and it's exciting, but like a darts player, he's not going to break sweat. However, cut to him hill stalking in Cumbria with a guide who is half mountain goat and life is a whole lot more uncomfortable as these Sunday lunches come home to roost. The heart is pumping, the legs are aching, the chances are the deer are on the move and when the shot finally, finally presents itself, you are not going to have five minutes to compose yourself and let your heart rate drop. Can you take the shot? Fitness is fundamental. The ability to recover, to drop that heart rate down, to get the kind of feeling back into your legs and take that safe shot, knowing you've actually done it properly, is so, so important. And a lot of people are just not fit enough to do it. This is probably why stalkers do actually take a long time getting up a hill, because they can't afford to have a, a client to, to miss an animal. So fitness is key. Biathletes do it. They arrive at the stand with a heart rate of 180 beats per minute, yet still make freehand shots at 50 metres. One of them describes it as running up 10 flights of stairs and then trying to thread a needle. Well, in our own low-budget way, sporting rifle writer Tim Pillbeam is going to walk, jog and sprint his heart out for us. We'll then be able to see just how accurate he can be on the sorts of targets faced by the biathlon competitors. This beautiful film called Fire and Ice by Alfred Dunhill profiles British biathlete Lee Jackson. It's all about speed and control and a very cool rifle. But Tim, being Tim, has one of those. The Anschutz 1727F with the straight pull bolt. The standard 178MR has got the actual Fortner action, which is beautifully engineered straight pull. And basically it's operated by using your index finger and your thumb. Simple as that. It's locked into the action itself by these little ball bearings. Got a match barrel on it, which is superb. We've got a two-stage trigger. Absolutely beautiful. Nice bit of walnut here, 2,300 pounds. Let's see what we can do with it. That's the rifle. Let's create some targets, both for Tim to shoot at and for his heart rate to rise to. In the biathlon, they have two types of shooting, prone and also standing. But uh, prone, they'll shoot at a 45 centimetre target. And when they're standing up, they shoot at a 11 and a half centimetre target, which is roughly the same size as this the clay pigeon. My pulse is actually about 100, 102 now. So I'm just trying to settle down, try to uh, get rid of the, uh, the nerves. The biathletes do this in 30 seconds. I won't. Next, we get Tim moving. It's a brisk walk. 120 beats. Now jogging. Bye. <laughs> oh my goodness. Finally, a sprint. Now, we promised Tim we wouldn't make fun of his running style, but Mrs. Pillbeam insists we do. Just a quickie. Tim arrives back and, puffing away, tries to make the targets. 150. Go Legs are burning. Yeah, my recovery is quite fairly quick because I'm a reasonably uh, active person, so uh, it's dropping very, very quickly now. I normally that would take most people a good minute, maybe two minutes, to drop down to a level where you're actually happy to shoot, um, which is down to about 100 really. So, uh, yeah, all in a day's work, David. What's interesting, I zeroed the rifle. We had uh, three shots in the ball there, had a flyer there. So we are about right at 50 meters. 
and for some reason I got a tighter group <laughs> when my lungs were bursting, so I don't know what's happened there. But I think as we said, as the, um, the trigger is so fine, you can literally just, just snatch it very, very quickly. So uh, you can just, as soon as it's actually anywhere near that, I'm just pulling it very, very sharply, so I'm not getting any trigger snatch at all. The prone position has not shown a real correlation between accuracy and heart rate, but the standing shot is the real test, and so much of that is about technique. They mount the rifle very high on the shoulder and they bring it down. And to get a very, very firm grip on the front, we're using skeletal strength. So we're going to be using this, uh, the, the arm. It's pushed right against my torso and I'm literally, it's resting on my, on my hand. And the strength actually is, is my arm here and also my bicep. It's all actually skeletal, it's all pushing against my torso. Very, very firm and very, very steady position. Tim goes through the motions again. Oh, bollocks. Completely missed that. Oh dear, that was pretty poor. Okay, dental jog. Oh no. I was trying to hold my breath then. And uh, so as soon as I about to squeeze the trigger, I hold my breath, so try to get some more stability in the rifle. It didn't work very well. I think, it'll, I think I completely missed the target in one of the shots. I shot far too high. So uh, not very easy. Now we can go for a sprint. I think I missed the target in all four shots. I was trying to hold my breath, try to get everything out, drawing lots of fresh oxygen, but I couldn't do it. So, uh, failed miserably. I think I've got about a, a two foot group. So, uh, not very good at all. But it just shows you how, uh, how fit these guys are how they can just bring that heart rate right down to a limit where they actually can shoot a four inch target standing up from 50 meters is absolutely amazing. You might think that there's little chance that you'll ever need to shoot an animal after running across a glen. However, what if there's a wounded beast? It's useful to have a plan B. And just in case you think this rifle is only for biathletes, it makes a cool pest controller too and he didn't even have to break sweat. The fittest farmer in field sports there. Thank you, Tim. And if you want to see Tim's other films for us, click on the link up there, including his look at budget rifles. Now, the man who put the word freak into fitness, it is David on the Field Sports Channel, News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. An 11-year-old girl has shot and killed a cougar which was stalking her brother. The female big cat was spotted near the family home in Washington State in the days prior to the shooting. Thankfully, Shelby White knew one end of a rifle from another, having been hunting since she was eight and with three deer to her name. The mountain cat was believed to be about four years old and weighed about 50 pounds, which is about half of what an animal that age should weigh. Boring but important. Natural England's consultation on general and class licences closes on May the 19th. This is your chance to stop the government from banning the shooting of jackdaws, jays and collared doves and to stop them from making you scare birds before you shoot them. Please email naturalengland, which is wildlife.consultation at naturalengland.org.uk. Meanwhile, a motion which could have seen a European ban on traps such as Larsen traps has been defeated in the European Parliament. Birdwatchers have migrated to Malta to protest against the shooting of birds migrating from Africa to Europe. Among them is Chris Packham and Bill Oddy. Chris Packham will be posting his video diary between the 21st and 26th of April nightly on YouTube. Also there is League Against Cruel Sports boss Joe Duckworth. The San people of Botswana, the famous Kalahari Bushmen, have appealed to Prince Charles to help them overturn 
a ban on hunting in their country. Charles and Prince William called on nations to curb poaching and succeeded in getting many world leaders on their side. But the Botswanan president got the wrong end of the stick and banned hunting instead of cracking down on the poaching and now faces the wrath of his people who've been hunting in the Kalahari since the dawn of time. A wannabe politician in the US is using the American fear of surveillance drones to help his campaign. Matt Rosendale of Montana pretends to shoot down an unmanned drone in this video. His opponents point out that shooting down aircraft in American airspace carries a minimum 20 years in jail. And finally, a trail cam set up to capture deer has captured a UFO, apparently. Rayner and Edith Shattles of Mississippi, who own the trail cameras, say they are unable to explain the strange lights behind the deer, which is a long way from a usable road. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie. Up early this morning, night after a few hooded crows and a wiener magpies with air rifle. Cheers. Hello Charlie. G'day Charlie, I'm just here in Pontefract doing a bit of rough shooting. My name's Christian Collins, have a good day. Hi Charlie, my name's Jacob Carr. This is my 14 year old birthday uh, present. Um, I got a Gamble auto loader and I came in to shoot with my uncle and we're big fans of your show. I don't know if you can see that Charlie, but that is the first marmot I've seen this summer. How cool is that? Uh, actually it's the first marmot I've ever seen. Oh, they're sweet. Salut Charlie, comment ça va? J'ai passé une très bonne saison ici en Lille des Alpes. Je suis rentré jeudi et j'ai la hâte pour la chasse. Tu mes familles me dit qu'ils ils ont souillé les pois et les pois poussent très vite. Je pense que il sera les chasse aux pigeons ce week-end. Ciao. Send us your own hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now, continuing our rimfire theme, Andy Crow woke up early this morning to go for a walk after rabbits with his faithful 2-2 and his cracking 1-7 HMR. It's a good morning for a stork. On this excursion, we hear our first cuckoo. Woo! Note that the fallow have moved onto the farm again and, uh-oh, there's a litter of fox cubs. We're not quick enough with the rifle, but Andy knows where they are. So what do you do? Shoot the vixen first, then the cubs, or the other way around? Put different people have got different ideas on which way to control them. So if I get a chance, I probably will take one of the cubs, but you're better off shooting the vixen first and then getting the cubs afterwards. All the time you've got cubs on the ground, the vixen's going to carry on killing, so there's definitely two there, because I see that one coming from behind, and there was, I saw one in the, on the outside of the hole. The foxes are a sideshow. The main aim of this morning is to stalk rabbits and highlight the benefits and the limitations of two of the most popular rounds in the country, the 2-2 and the 1-7 HMR. They both have strong fan bases, so we're bound to upset someone. We're starting with the 2-2, which Andy admits has been in the cabinet for a while. Put David out of bed a bit early. Just have a mooch around, see if we can pick a few rabbits off. I've got the old trusty 2-2 out. I haven't shot it for about five, nearly six years since I got the 1.7. Um, so it's, I thought I'd take it out this morning and see if we can pick a few rabbits off. It's a bit quieter than the 1.7, well, a lot quieter than the 1.7. It's just got a cheap old, cheap old scope on the top of it, but no, let's just see how we get on. The rabbits are a touch nervous this morning, which means Andy has to shoot further than he'd like with the 2.2. It's a round that needs working with. On this shot, Andy drops short. It's 70 yards. He admits he's rusty with the 2-2. The main reason for using it this morning is stealth. Brought the 2-2, I thought, well, noise factor as much as anything. But a lot of the rabbits we've seen have been from 70 out to about 120 yards, which is ideal for the, for the 1-7. It's still on, it's still accurate. It's just that the old trigger's a little bit, sorry, a lot heavier than what the 1-7. 
and he gets the first rabbit of the morning, and a second almost immediately. Was that because there wasn't too much noise? Possibly, but now Andy sure. is back in tune with the Bruneau, he bags a couple more in the farmyard. They're at a much more comfortable range. Success. I've mastered the old trigger a bit better. I'm really pushing into the old stick a bit. And I just smacked another couple of nice rabbits. That bullet gone right through its neck. It's still lively. I had to grab hold of it and break its neck. One seven, that would have uh, one seven, that would have taken its head off. There's nothing wrong with a two two. But I shot one one side of the yard, and his mate just trotted to this side of the yard. Whether he'd have done that with a one seven, the crack probably would have rattled around the buildings here, and uh, they both would have. Uh, I would have got one and probably not got the other. So horses for courses. With a few bunnies for our efforts, Andy swaps to the 17 HMR. He already feels we'd have had three times as many rabbits if he'd been using the faster, lighter, but more expensive calibre. I always have two magazines. I just reload as I'm going along. I, I use one, have one mag in the, the gun and make sure the other one's always loaded in the pocket. Andy finds the 17 easier to get on with because he doesn't have to think. He just puts the crosshairs on the rabbit and pulls the trigger, even pushing out to 170 yards. People like Mark Gilchrist that all he uses a 2-2, well, uh, he uses it and he knows to drop at long range. He shoots stuff out 100 yards plus. Yeah, well, that's what all, we, all he uses. But for me, all I use is a 1-7, so all I've got to do is aim straight at it. Makes the job so much easier. He's just up with a rifle and straight on it, bang. And 65 yards, I think. Right. And off the stick, so I'm happy with that. We get some nice long range rabbits. Of course, there should be less meat damage with the 2 2 than the frangible 17 HMR, but on the flip side, says Andy, the rabbit isn't going anywhere after a strike from a 17. The 2 2 isn't as devastating. Both of these rifles have their limitations, and because it's a still morning, we haven't even touched on wind or the potential of a ricochet. But for a pest controlling tool, Farmer's Crow and Pillbeam would both go for a 17. There will be comments below, and you will undoubtedly have a view on Facebook too. From Mr Crow to Mr Universe and the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewer Aaron Custance recommends Argentina Dove Hunting by JJ Casaria. He rightly calls it a great video and a lot of snap shooting and long shots. I featured one of Mark Ripley's films and he gets in touch to say he has been doing plenty of foxing since then on the Sussex Downland, keeping down the fox numbers during lambing. Here is a 670 yard fox and there is more like it on his channel. Another viewer delighted by his appearance on Hunting YouTube is Keith Allen, who specialises in shooting koi poos at his home in France. He reckons the second one he features in this film is a bit of a monster, which puts the giant rats being found all around Europe into perspective. Staying with viewer videos, Leszek Kaminski from Poland sends me his film of someone making a pair of Le Chameau Wellington boots. It's strangely relaxing to watch. Now let's cross the Atlantic for spring seal hunting 2014. Clips and highlights from a couple of days seal hunting out of Williams Harbour. Very successful hunts, says the film's maker William Larkham Jr. Lots of healthy meat for the summer months. To France for the last part of Din Din Chasse's boar shooting trilogy. Chasse au Sanglier 2013-2014 sees him in a good position, resolving not to be as clumsy a shot as usual. Iber Hunting has brought out this film of a Spanish Monteria. It is, he promises, an experience to live at least once in your hunting life. Finally, an interesting question faces Rose Stalker in this film. The doe has some kind of growth or cyst on its backside. Shoot the animal? Don't shoot it? What would you do? Most YouTube commenters say shoot. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you are missing the fishing films and the air gun films, watch our new shows Airheads and Fishing Britain. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you enjoyed those, let's have a look at what's on offer from Airheads, Fishing Britain and the Schools Challenge. Last week's Airheads takes a fascinating look at the BSA factory in Birmingham, why their barrels are special and introducing their new HFT offering. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. 
There's another Airheads out tomorrow night, Thursday the 23rd of April 2014, where Andy Crow is seeing if he can bend it like Beckham. Firstly with a bent barrel, and then a straight one. Plus, we invite you to dine at the Rat Bistro. Darren's been filming what the rats love getting their teeth into. The latest Fishing Britain has angling superstar Howell Morgan meeting his stunt double, Bob, to test out life jackets. Plus he goes to find the tough trout of the taff with a couple of fellow fly fishing champions. Fishing Britain is out every Friday at 7pm UK time. This week we're on board a boat in the Mersey with a rock star. And Schools Challenge TV this week takes a long look at girls with guns. They are some of the best known faces in shooting sports. TSC talks to BBC Young Sports Personality of the Year Amber Hill alongside Fit Ask legend Becky McKenzie. Click here for the full story. Well, we are back next week and if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our programme that's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.